We're back with more of my interview with Vice President Kamala Harris today in Greenville, Mississippi. You know, we started off talking about Ukraine, and I wonder if you're concerned, having, as you said, been in these European capitals, uh, promoting the idea, mm -hmm. as President Biden says, that America is back, that we are mm -hmm. uh, back, you know, in, in, in line with the West and promoting the ideas of democracy, that it, it may be difficult for our allies to trust that our democracy will hold if a former president can participate in and foment an attempted coup in this country um, and can walk away from it. Um, and as this in, in, in this in this country right now, Republicans all across the country are severely restricting the right to vote, mm -hmm. um, severely undermining access to the ballot. Doesn't that undermine the case that you need to make and that the president needs to make about democracy, about American democracy? Well, it's not new that, that there will be attacks on our, our democratic systems from within. That's not new. Um, the, the, the point has to be, what are we doing to stand up against that, right? And so we have been attempting, for example, in, the, in Congress to get the John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act passed, the Freedom to Vote Act passed. We need to get those passed because after 2013 in Shelby v. Holder, when the Voting Rights Act was gutted, essentially, we need to put back in place those protections. We are going to continue to work on what we need to do to fight back against what's happening in those states, including supporting all of the folks at the local level, who in many other states are actually strengthening the right to vote. Essentially, what's at issue, and I think it's plain as day to see, is that people, again, in record numbers voted in 2020, and that scared some folks. So now they are in the process of trying to put in place laws around in various states in our country to make it more difficult to vote with the expectation and intention that if you make it more difficult to vote, certain people won't vote. I think that folks know when they stood in those lines in 2020 for hours, when that single mother or father put those kids in the back seat and then drove to drop that ballot off in the drop box, they went and voted because they said, I want certain things. I want an extension of the child tax credit, and they got it. They said, I want to see money go to HBCUs, and they got it. They said, I want to see that we're going to have a real commitment to having broadband and high-speed internet for all communities, including rural communities, that is going to be affordable, including in ur urban communities. They got that. They said they want to have an administration that fights for affordable child care so that nobody should pay more than 7 percent of their income in child care. We're fighting for that. I think the people in 2020 made an order. They put in their order when they voted and said this is the, these are the things they want. And they got those things. And that in the next election, they're going to know that when they vote, that vote matters and it produces results based well, on what they dictate. Well, one of the things that we're seeing is um, NBC News polling and mm -hmm. others showing a disconnect um, between the performance of the economy and, as you said, mm -hmm. you know, the, the actual substance of what has been passed mm -hmm. and what American voters have received um, and people's contentment, um, including with the administration. There is an enthusiasm gap that's north of 10, 12 percent. Republicans are more enthusiastic than Democrats. And when you dig down into those numbers, it's because many in the Democratic base don't feel that they've gotten what they voted for, what they were promised by the Biden-Harris um, campaign, um, now that it is the Biden-Harris administration. One of the reasons for that is that Senator Joe Manchin, Senator Kirsten Sinema have stood in the way of extending the child tax credit, have stood in the way of increasing the minimum wage, have stood in the way of many of the, you know, the Build Back Better um, uh, bill, have stood in the way of passing voting rights. Are Senators Manchin and Sinema, in the view of the White House, are they allies of this administration or are they opponents? Not one Republican voted for the American Rescue Plan which brought $1,400 checks to people when they needed it most, when we had millions of people out of work through no fault of their own. Not one voted when we were extending the child tax credit. And working parents know what that meant and what it means in terms of helping them get through the days in the month and satisfy their basic responsibilities to parent their children. 
when we look at what we achieved in terms of putting in place a system around getting vaccines for people. So now over 200, I think it's in 15 million people have been vaccinated in our country. And as a result, we've been able to reopen our schools. 99% of them are reopened. Businesses are reopening. These are the achievements that were made possible in spite of the fact that not one Republican in so many of these policies voted. So I'm not going to get caught up in kind of an internal firing squad mm -hmm. when you got to look at the fact that if we're talking about party politics, uh, you, you've got a system where you also have an entire group of people who I believe have diverse interests and needs but are for some reason falling in line behind a, a party instead of behind a policy that actually is in the best interest of their constituents. Let's do a quick lightning round. Um, okay. Let, let's talk about Jenny Thomas, um, the wife of Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas. I don't do lightning rounds. I'm just telling you. But, <laughs> but because there's, it's not that simple it's for me ever. Simple. So before you ask any question, know that. Absolutely. And I don't mind that <laughs> okay, at all. I okay. don't mind that at all. I'm looking at the, the clock, for the person who is minding the clock okay. behind you, but I'm fine okay. with that. Do you believe that the revelations about Jenny Thomas um, have revealed that the the ethics rules for Supreme Court justices need to be strengthened. Should Clarence Thomas recuse himself from any cases related to January 6th or future elections? I, I definitely think that the court needs to take a critical look at its rules around ethics, and that relates to a series of issues that have come up over the years. Yeah. We all sat and watched the Ketanji Brown Jackson uh, hearings uh, in which she very calmly um, sat through what yeah. I think a lot of, particularly black women, let's just be honest, felt was brazen disrespect from senators like Lindsey Graham, senators like Tom Cotton, senators like Josh Hawley. Mm -hmm. What did you think when you watched that hearing? I will tell you, Joy, I experienced great joy when I watched this brilliant, phenomenal black woman, jurist, be so smart and just cut through the political gamesmanship that they were attempting to incite. And she just was composed and as far as I'm concerned, was taking a whole lot of people to school. And I watched that with incredible joy, because it was just brilliance being displayed for the entire country to see. And I cannot wait to see. I, it, that will only be matched by the joy that I experience when I see her take the oath to be the next justice on the United States Supreme Court. Vice President Harris, thank you so thank much. Thank you, Joy. It's good to be you. with you. Great Thank to be you. With you. Thank you.